Taking a critical look at the gaming news of the week. This is Augmented Reality, presented by the Triple S League. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Augmented Reality Podcast. It's December 4th, 2018. My name is Ashen Inity, and I'm here, as always, with the Cybsidian. And Hello. sorry Hello. for the late start today. We had some news breaking, like, literally as we were getting ready to go live. Uh, the Epic Games Store has just been announced, and this could potentially be a major competitor to Steam. And uh, we don't know a ton of details. The, like I said, the, the news is breaking as we speak, but according to uh, the blog post at unrealengine.com, uh, this, it's an online store that is going to give uh, an 88% revenue share in favor of developers, which um, really severely undercuts uh, Steam's, the, the, the share that Steam gives to its developers, which is, uh, yeah. what is so, it like? So the, the worst case scenario is you make a game with Epic Engine, um, or there's some other engines out there that take a direct cut of your, uh, of your sales. So in... Uh, the baseline cut is is thirty percent for Steam and seventy percent for you, the the developer. Um, and then if you have a publisher in there, they take a portion of it. And if you have somebody else in there, then they take a portion of it. And like I said, if you're using Unreal, uh, Unreal takes five percent, uh, four to five percent of it. Um, and then, uh, um, sorry, five percent of it. And then then if you're working on some of these other engines, some of these other engines take a a, a portion cut of that as well. So all in all, um, some of the worst case scenarios is you're only making 60% of what the Steam store sells your content for. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to pay taxes on top of that too for wherever you're, you're applicable to those taxes. Right. And in some places, you have to pay double taxes. So you're paying taxes to um, you know, the EU or the, uh, the US government, and then you're paying taxes on top of your local country taxes depending on what country you are in and depending on the particular trade relations in said countries with um with the countries that you're selling those games to the people who live in them so it's really muddy and it's really difficult to make and this has been a complaint for a long period of time is like steam does not do very much for the 30 percent cut that they take which is huge um, in comparison to what other services do. For example, <clears throat> you know, when you're, when you're selling a game uh, through a particular publisher, there's a lot of cases where your publisher is taking less money from you than Steam is. And, and that's a huge thing in and of itself on top of that too. So this is, um, this is really huge. So the, some of the worst case scenarios is you're getting less than 60%. Um, Epic has just announced that they're doing a 12% flat cut. And if you make your game with Epic uh, Unreal Engine um, 4 or, or any of the Unreals, then they are going to waive the, the normal 5% fee that they charge you on Steam, and they're just going to make the Epic Store eat that in and of itself. So this means so that... Instead of making 60%, you're looking at You're making, making it 88%. 88%, which is... A could potentially be Huge. a lot of money. Massive difference. No, like massive difference. Sales so you're, volumes you're... are going to play into that, obviously. But yes. Now, yeah. how many users are on this new Epic Store engine? You might be asking because surely everybody knows that there's like between fifty and a hundred million general active users on Steam. Um, Steam boasts an average uh, monthly activation of accounts of around like fifty million. Um, but they have more past that 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 is um, is fractured or one-time buying or stuff like that, um, and then there's duplicate accounts and, and some other stuff. However, uh, what we're seeing and what we're hearing um, that we know from Fortnite, being that Fortnite's the one of the biggest games in the world right now, <coughs> excuse me, um, that that there's a possibility that um, that this Epic Store is going to launch with a baseline of around 70 million active um, accounts. So hmm. all of these yeah. 70 million people who are currently playing Fortnite on a PC and on any platform are suddenly going to be given advertisements for the Epic Store saying, hey, if you like if you like Fortnite, 
try this game or this game or this game and and we're giving you know low prices and and the developers so we're gonna see a lot of developers start flocking to this pretty quickly um i suspect we're gonna see a lot of uh, a lot of developers are going to launch on both the uh only question that i have which which i have not seen here as of yet is how or in what facet are they going to implement um, censorship controls? So as we know, this was a big issue in Steam a couple months ago, that there were a couple of people who, a couple of developers who were making games that are not kid-friendly. Of course, I know, like, so by kid-friendly, I mean, like, not safe for work, usually of a sexual nature kind of thing. Um, however, you could buy Mortal Kombat and watch you know, somebody be, you know, drawn, like, qu literally quartered, extremely graphically, and yet, you know, very few people complain about that as far as, like, you know, kid-friendly yeah. content. Yeah, no, it's the, so it's, it's it's the like, classic it's, debate. It's the classic debate on that. It, it, so it's, 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 it's strange and it's silly. So, is, you, is Epic Games going to do this, the same thing here on this system? Are, are we going to see... You know, violence is okay, but you know, having a, a you know a lolly in a in a short dress is that you know is that suddenly going to be equal an immediate ban? Um, so th this is this is going to be really really interesting to watch and see how this develops over the next couple of days and weeks here because this is this this is going to be um, there's going to be more details that are going to be revealed at the game awards. Uh, on Thursday here, so they've they've actually like said that there's more details to come at the Game Awards. So this is one of the big announcements that was looks like it was scheduled to be at the Game Awards, and there no there's no game with this. So we've still got um, additional games that are going to be launching at the the Game Awards. Plus we're going to be seeing this Epic Store coming out with like I mean at, right off the top, if you have very little interest in you know that that extra thirty percent. You just want to move more units right away. You can give a twenty percent discount on your game, selling it on the Epic on this Epic Store, and you'll still be making pretty much just about the same amount of money, uh, or a little bit more if you're using the Unity Engine game. So this is in comparison to Steam. So th this means that if you if you the player pop over to Steam uh, from Steam over to Epic, uh, you can get your games at. at Usually a, a general like ten to fifteen percent off, more so. Potentially, um, yes. Yeah. Potentially in some sales uh, by some developers, and those developers are not seeing that general overall loss in sales if you if you're doing a direct comparison to what they would have been spending over on Steam. Mm -hmm. So now, undoubtedly, so is, Steam is, is going to have some kind of response to this. So this is yeah, this yeah. is fascinating, and so this is well, going to be an interesting Steam thing. Has already. So Steam, part of the other breaking news in this, Steam has come out to say that they're changing it so that if you move more than ten million dollars uh, worth of of money on their their program on their platform, uh, that they're going to start to give you a deduction on how much Steam takes, and it's going to decrease in in large percentage chunks. I think it's like five or ten percent, um, and this is in just kind of been uh, was a general response but this is also like this only affects like the big companies this only affects big yeah for big, sure big games like this doesn't affect like the small average uh you know indie developer and the indie guys are really upset about this because they're on steam complaining that and really upset that there is this favoritism being shown to the big guys but i need to remind the indie devs out there that if it wasn't for the big games, then they would just be a plethora of indie games on an indie game store, which is not the same as being on the same storefront and having your ad pop up right beside two of the biggest games of the year. So, mm -hmm. the, the developers have to understand that they need to, you know, that 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 sometimes they, they have to pay that higher premium, but that higher premium does come with the ability for them to... Um, if you like tactical, uh, very tactical, strategic games, for example, and like I run into this, this is one of my favorite genres, is like a, a slow turn-based, team-based, strategic, um, 
uh, combat game, like uh, um, like uh, XCOM, stuff like that. That's that's a good example. Um, however, those types of games are rare and hard to find. But there are more of those games in the indie category than there is in the unofficial indie category. Same with 4X games. There's lots of 4X games that, um, you know, like big, like, you know, Civ type games or, or you know, uh, controlling the, the, uh, the galaxy type games. And these things are all, you're, you're capable of having this all in a scenario where, um, where you buy Civ 6 and you turn around and can immediately play or be advertised this small indie game that, that somebody's made um, that, that costs you a great deal less, but is in some cases more enjoyable. Right. So, so there's a, there's yeah, an so advantage there's, to being on there right the, next to yes, the big Yes, there is an advantage and... to it. And if, I mean, you know, that 5%, you, you know, you might look at that and you might, you know, get a little butthurt over that. But at the same time, it's like, I would pay that 5% to be, to be able to have the chance to advertise my game to people who buy games of that type. You know, if I'm making a game and I'm selling that game to the players and they see it and they go, oh yeah, this is, this is really interesting. Then, then that, that, you know, that, that's worth, I mean, 5% fee in advertising. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty good considering that most advertising is a lot more than that. And you don't typically get the, that kind of, of direct comparison Mm -hmm. on it. So. All right, but yeah, so, that's fascinating, and uh, we'll definitely be yeah. we will definitely be keeping our eye on this, bringing you more information as the information becomes available. But yes, the Epic Games Store, uh, it's going to be interesting to see see what that is, and we're going to be hearing more about it at the Game Awards, as I mentioned just a moment ago. And we're going to be talking a lot about the Game Awards today. But first, I just want to say, if you're listening live today, please say hello in the live chat and send us your questions and comments there as well. We'll read and respond to as many as we can throughout the podcast. And don't forget to take a moment to slam that like button, it likes it rough, to tell us on YouTube that you appreciate this content. If you're listening after the fact on one of the audio-only platforms, iTunes, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, we're glad you're here as well. Just bear in mind that it takes us a a few days sometimes to get the the podcast up on those audio platforms. Uh, So if you want the latest info sooner, please hit the link in that description to subscribe to the Triple S League YouTube channel. All right, Uh, we had the conversation going in chat long before we even started today and uh, that always makes me very happy but hello rave droblet megan smart sword sister dancing on the ashes uh, vendor wreck greek strawberry overlord 580 did i get everyone i think so so hello to all of you hello to all of you who are also uh, you know just lurking and listening um no obligation to um to uh, get involved in the live chat but you're certainly welcome to we we love seeing everybody's uh everybody's comments and questions there um lots of lots of uh comments about the game awards coming up here let's see some stuff yeah, about... Chad just literally took off in discord a few seconds ago yeah um, um it, 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 just all about um all about what's going on at the at the game awards rumors um, and there's a ton. Well, there's so something we're, we're there's something here to I want to address from the chat. Overlord580 is saying VGA's released a teaser of the awards show, and it shows a frame from the Cyberpunk 2077 E3 trailer. Uh, and yet, uh, as Megan points out here, uh, CDPR, and we were going to address this today, CD Projekt Red has said that they don't have any official presence at the Game Awards. So I wonder what that's all about. Okay, well... I mean, that came out a couple of days ago. So CDPR said that they're not going to be there. Yeah. Um, but there's... And I, it's really one of the frustrating things. So just because they put it in a trailer and they're talking about, you know, the Game Awards for the, the year and they're talking about, like, they're covering latest news and information. This is not a big conspiracy. This is just advertising highlights of the year in gaming and referencing that in the trailer so that you tune in to watch this. It's there's not there's no giant conspiracy here, people. <laughs> it's, no way. it's they're just advertising highlights from the you know things that pop this year in gaming, and they're referencing that in this trailer. There's no secret agenda that that you know CDPR is not going to pop out in the middle of the thing and announce the um, 
the the uh, release date for the game. It's it's like, no, they're just showcasing stuff to pop this year. They got got the industry talking, and the the awards are rewarding, you know, that stuff that have has officially come out, you know, this year so far. Okay, fair so, enough. Yeah. So, uh, as far as we know, officially, CD Projekt Red is not going to be there. But, uh, um, I mean. Th- doesn't necessarily mean they don't have people there but uh they they don't they're not going to be making any announcements having any new trailers that kind of a thing yeah the game awards is for uh the game awards the primary thing that the game awards is for is rewarding the games that are out right and uh, and moving a little bit towards showcasing games that are coming out but still the main focus of the the game awards is about stuff that is out yeah it's not about um, it's not a, it's not a, a two hour session, uh, you know, focusing on one or two particular games that are due to be out this year, because that, that's the, that's the, if you want to over hype yourself, you know, do, you know, announce your games at a, a, a game award show, um, <laughs> you know, in, in that capacity of like having the game awards focus on it completely. It's like tuning into like the Oscars, which, which I mean, you don't normally like most people don't normally do that. The Oscars are are you know they've been going down in popularity. Same with all the other award shows. Most of these award shows are garbage, and I don't encourage you to watch them. However, the Game Awards is a little bit different, and the industry is a little bit different, and hype does play into it a little bit. But making a quick comparison, it's like if you went to the Oscars. And it was an hour of just hyping a movie that's due to come out in the next year or two. That's just not what you're there for. It's just not. It's just not what you and all the other actors showed up to do. Is to look at a project that is, you know, due to come out. Like that. This it just wouldn't work that way. So I encourage people to calm down. It's not, um, you know, part of the reason that we're covering it is, of course, for the, the games that are coming out. There's going to be a bunch of trailers. There's going to be a, non- a bunch of announcements. But like I said, the games industry is a little bit different than than the um, than the movie industry or you know, uh, I mean the the you don't really have a focus on like the skills. Like you see a couple developers c- get up on stage, unless you follow that company really closely and you follow like the vast majority of the employees' is Twitter accounts and you're you're constantly reading every article you can get from them. You don't have any clue who these people are typically. You might ha- know one or two of them who steps on the stage to receive their award, but it's not about the the uh, the people that are receiving the awards. It's about the companies that are receiving the awards for the most part, and a little bit about the people. And one of the one of the only things where I'm really excited to see a person receive an actual award at the award show is going to be Christopher Judd. Uh, he was he played uh, uh, Kratos in the God of War. Um, he did uh, pretty much all the motion capture for that as well. Uh, there's a couple of videos out there where, you know, they, they have him and the, the boy actor, um, they play opposite each other. They're, you know, they've got these, uh, facial, uh, capture cameras on as well as the fact that they're in these, you know, they're in the tight suits and they're, they're, you know, with the little balls on them, you know, getting tracked for, for every motion. Um, and while that is becoming more and more of an official thing in the games, that we we see that where this motion capture and this performance capture is really 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 important to the success of a video game. Um, this is where we we actually do have this this uh, aspect of of you know being having these actors having these people that you you look forward to seeing. If Christopher Judd wins, he's going to have a pretty good speech. Um, he's a great actor himself. He's a great entertainer himself. Um, that will probably be the f- five most entertaining moments or minutes of the entirety of the of the show. Uh, you know, like last year, one, that was the for the motion capture award that went to the um, the lady who did the uh, was it the I forget both the name of the game and her name as well. But that was, which I know is like me saying, this was the most entertaining and I've totally forgotten about all of it. <laughs> um, but it, it's it's the fact that she won it. She wasn't an official actor actress. She was just somebody at the studio who 
put her heart and soul into it and, and it worked out really really well and she was awarded with Andy circus standing right behind her and and hellblade yes thank you um and that, that was a critical moment of of that show it was really good it was it, it gave this real sense of like ah this is good to see this is something that's there um and and that's cool now that was somebody who wasn't well known as an actress uh winning that award duly just like she won it she won it because because her performance was that well done um but in this case looking at the actors that we have up on the list here i'm going to say hands down that christopher judd deserves to win 100 percent, and he should win and we will see what happens when an actual actor uh wins this award and and you know is able to do a good speech on it that that will be very entertaining to see i certainly encourage anybody and everybody to go please vote for the guy please don't vote for the Red Dead Redemption, just because it's popular. It's like <laughs> his performance. His performance was great. Okay, um, Red Dead definitely a good game, but not at the level at which Christopher Judd pulled that out. There's a difference between sitting in a booth and recording a handful of lines and having some facial mapping being done versus doing the entirety of a game whilst wearing a face camera that's recording your every move. Um, on top of being there at at you know uh, for every moment of the production of it, like there's 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 some major differences there, and Christopher Judd definitely definitely deserves this. Uh, I, I again I, because of the way that this is kind of a popularity contest for the game, you you're less likely to see that happen. Um, you know, it's it's like the it's like the anime awards. It's basically just a popularity contest for what what's hip in in mm -hmm. current season right now. So yeah. I don't think I need to ask who you voted for for best performance. Um, by the way, if you haven't voted yet for the Game Awards, I think the voting is still open. You go to uh, thegameawards.com. And uh, we're going to be doing some of our predictions for who's going to win in what category a little bit later on. Uh, there's a few other things we need to get to first. Lots to pack into the show today. Not sure if it'll be... Uh, it might be a little bit of a longer than average uh average show because of all of that and all of my windows just minimized automatically on their own why did they do that i don't know now you hit that little little button in the corner of the screen <laughs> well i i didn't actually i was i was dragging one of my windows around and uh yeah it, it does that from time all of to time. a sudden everything is just gone and now i windows is windows is great um <laughs> uh i just want to say hello to i kodachi and gamer wolf 42 from the lurkers corner thank you for uh thanks for saying hi welcome Glad you're listening to the show, and also Adam Smith. So, all right, let's get on to our uh, other big news topics for the day. So, um, Baggate, <laughs> Bethesda's uh, epic, well, epic screw-up. It was certainly, the response to it was rather epic. Uh, we discussed this last time on the podcast, basically uh, for the, the Power Armor edition of, of the the special edition of Fallout 76 uh, it was advertised with a canvas bag that would come with, the, you know, as a physical thing with your copy of the game. It also came with this power armor helmet, etc., etc. Um, anyway, they they quietly swapped out the the canvas bag for a nylon bag because apparently the canvas bags were too expensive to produce. All kinds of uh, response erupted about this on uh, on YouTube and in gaming media, talking about uh, talking about this, how cheap the bags were. And uh, also then talking about how influencers at the at the um, the event in West Virginia were actually given canvas bags, and so there's all this nonsense. Oh, but what really what really um, <laughs> kind of uh, hit the spark to the powder keg on that one was was a response from uh, Bethesda support to somebody who posted their response on Reddit. Um, you know, the, the person at said, you know, you advertised this canvas bag, gave me a nylon bag. What are you planning to do about this? I don't want that. Um, and they said, well, we're not planning to do anything about it, uh, except we'll give you $5 worth of in-game currency for microtransactions. And so that kind of set everybody off because that was kind of a, was kind of a ridiculous response. And, uh, the email itself was, uh, pretty blunt and came across as very disrespectful. Anyway. Uh, so all that backstory aside, uh, Bethesda support has come out now and said they are going to be shipping the canvas bags to everybody who bought this version of Fallout 76. So good on them for fixing that. 
Um, I mean, it's still kind of... It's disappointing that it's it took this time and took all of that backlash to actually make this happen. But uh, good on Bethesda for doing that. Um, and then there was... Uh, there was some controversy about Red Dead Online this week as well, but and looking at these two things in in comparison, side by side, there's some interesting things to point out about where Bethesda went wrong and where Rockstar um, did not go so wrong. There were some criticisms about Red Dead Online uh, about their in-game economy, about these gold bars that you have to uh, acquire in order to purchase certain things in game and how long the grind was to to actually get these gold bars like hours and hours i think it was something like eight hours to get a single gold bar and and then to buy something in in game would cost several gold bars so uh a long long grind like this kind of harkens back to getting darth vader in the in the um battle uh battlefront the whole controversy with ea on that yeah and uh but a couple things to point out about this red dead online is in is in beta Mm -hmm. and this just go and and then they've come out and announced that they're going to be rebalancing the in-game economy they almost immediately came out and said okay there's a problem here we're gonna fix it Mm -hmm. this really to me shows this is what bethesda should have done release your game as an early access beta and and then actually Tweak talk about the fixes need, yeah. that you're going to that you're going to be making. Um, like this, this is. I mean, there's a difference. Like the the term and the usage of beta is so screwed up in today's gaming world. It's ridiculous. Like it's utterly, utterly ridiculous. So what is a beta? A beta is before you launch the game. You have a ton of things that you don't know whether are they're balanced correctly or whether they are um in the in the state that you would like to present it as a finished product what is some of the quote unquote beta games that are out you know recently so let's look let's take a look at some of the um hot uh beta games that are in pre-production that are you know that have so much information to them that 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 they that they're not sure whether they can show these games to the public in full access or not uh so one game i'm not sure if you've heard of the, this at all it's called fortnite is in beta that is that's true it's technically like been in beta and it's bull it's, it's it's supposedly been in beta yeah for since since its inception yeah it was like uh some other like RimWorld was in beta for like two years, but that was a indie project. But it was still like, I mean, that game was was out and had the majority of its sales while it was in beta. And then you have other games that have that never left beta. Some of the Firefall is a great example. That game spent seven years in beta, like public access beta, where where you could buy a copy of the game and and get. It you know, access, quote unquote, to this game. And, but in, in, in the sense that that game was not nearly like Fortnite is finished, right? For the most part, Fortnite, Fortnite isn't officially, Fortnite is the game that you're going to be playing. Yes, they're changing up modes and they change up content all the time. But I mean, that, that game is out. Okay. And then you have these other betas, which are not a beta. They're glorified, like, demo tees. And and that's what we have in um, in Bethesda, and I'm really disappointed with Bethesda on this because when they said beta, I expected a full blown actual beta. I expected two to three months of of actual beta. Well, it turns out that you know it's not uh, it's not you know a couple months of beta. It's like it was it was what 16 hours of beta essentially before the the pre access or early access started, and that's that's not a beta. That that's a demo. Like let's just be honest with that. That's that's not even a that's not even a justifiable demo. That's a that's a piece of crap demo. Um, and and so these terms are just thrown around. Like so, like we say with with other projects, especially especially uh, Cyberpunk and CDPR, 
when they say they're in beta, they're actually using appropriate terminology for it. They're using the appropriate terminology for what their alpha is in. And then when they go from alpha to beta to release, is it is actually a pretty short window for them. And they do it because, you know, Fortnite's going to spend the next 10 years in quote unquote beta stage, right? And and that's the law. That's that's the stage that should be the shortest. That's your like polish and, and ship. Most games that take you know two to three years to develop, their beta stage should be about three months, six to three months, give or take. That that's how that game should play out in the in its creation process. But you don't see that these days, and it's honestly a little disgusting. And it it's really tiring to see this because again. On one aspect, on one side of the thing, you've got people saying, well, Fortnite's in beta and it's fine. And then, you know, comparing it to, you know, the, the beta that you get from from Bethesda. And, and it's like these two things are diametrically opposed in the very core of what they mean when they're talking about it being a beta. Oh, do, yeah, Dota 2, of course. Uh, Dota 2 is still in beta, right? <laughs> oh, boy. So uh, the, Dota the 2 has been out for, like, kind of what, like 20 meaning. years now? It's, it's yeah. utterly ridiculous. It's just, so the term really loses its meaning when it has yes. so many different meanings. Mm-hmm. What we saw from CDPR, the, you know, the, the gameplay footage from uh, for uh, Cyberpunk 2077, that was alpha footage. That's pre-beta. Yeah, that was, that, that was that pre-alpha, was alpha, actually. And it was more polished then I would say it was more polished than even Red Dead. <laughs> like, I mean, least, I mean, yeah, it's, at least it's, as polished. It's equivalent. It's, a, it's, a, it's equivalent because you could take, you take that, you know, as, as scripted as it was, because you, you did have a lot of those fights that like, you can tell that they, they probably filmed that several times um, because of the way that they, you know, the camera panning and the way that like, it's, it's very much a scripted, uh, showcase, yeah, which is a presentation say, piece for sure. Yeah, which is not to say that the combat was all scripted, right? There's a big, 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 big difference between scripted scripted combat encounter and scripted um, somebody scripting to play the game in such a way that you can show it as a trailer. Uh, for example, like you know, uh, and and we do that too. Like when we're streaming a game. Um, one of the things that I'll tend to do when I'm bored or when I'm like losing focus is I'll just move the camera around like sporadically and randomly when I'm playing by myself. You don't do that when you're streaming because that just makes everybody seasick and, and it's like, what well, you know, WTF are you, are you doing? You do take a little bit more time to look at certain things and to, and you're not as, um, as sporadic with your, your mouse movement. You're trying to be, you know, you're trying to, uh, play the game well enough that somebody can watch it and be entertained by it. Um, you know, way back in the day, you know, before even the internet, and I'm really dating myself now, uh, I used to sit behind my brother as he would play uh, the first Fallout game. And I would sit behind him and watch him as he played. And I realize now, that's basically what streaming is these days. Oh, yeah. Basically, you just you you're just essentially sitting behind somebody and you're just watching them play the game. And well, it's, it's, I used to do that all the time. And and I mean, we used to do that. Like when when you would come over to my place or when I'd go over to your place, and and we had a single player game. One of us would sit there and play it while the other person watched, and then we you know trade off and back and forth and uh, from time to time. Now multiplayer was definitely more the preferred thing, but it wasn't. I mean, it was definitely like like we definitely did that when it came to like mm -hmm. you know some of the more like hell we even did that in in uh for mass effect one so yeah right but bringing it back though so so yeah. uh red dead online uh technically in, in beta or at least what whatever they define as a beta um but yeah if i've said this multiple times now on the on the uh discord and just talking to people um I've been out talking to people about about Fallout 76 and they hear that we're covering it on the channel and they're like isn't that like getting really bad reviews or you know my friend said it was terrible but my other friend said it was great and I don't know what to think about it um you know I've just been open and said you know I'm enjoying it but there were there were a lot of problems with how the yeah, went about it's... certain things and it feels like I'm playing an early access title that's just the bottom line but yes. on that note 
There was a big update today, the first of two big updates that Bethesda announced last week, um, addressing player concerns about certain things. And so if you log back into the game later today, uh, you'll find that you should find that your stash uh, weight limit has been increased to 600 and a few other things uh, that have been fixed as well. And then there's another big one coming next week. So uh, as I've said, you know, they are listening to our concerns at least. And then they, they did listen to the community's concerns about these canvas bags. So, so things are moving. They're mm -hmm. at least in the wake of all these mistakes, they're at least turning around and trying to make things right. Um, it's still frustrating that, that these mistakes and problems happened in the first place. You would think that, like, did they really think nobody was going to notice that, you know, they didn't... Somebody was going to notice and point it out on the internet that they didn't get the bag that was advertised. Like, if they, even if they only shipped 100 units, somebody's going to notice and then <laughs> complain about it. And then when they get that kind of a crap response, of course they're going to publish it on Reddit. What do you think is going to happen? This is the inter... Cy mentioned, you know, the time before the internet, which, I mean, that's basically uh, just after the T-Rex went well, extinct, well, I think. Public but public access uh, um, to to the internet, which is which is different than when the internet was invented, because... Those oh, yeah, are... yeah, yeah. The internet has technically been around since the 60s, mm -hmm. but uh, in its and current it was form... And it was even theorized by um by people ahead of that time like this was something that that the early concept of it started to float around in the early days of the radio so like and when i say early days of the radio I'm, we're talking like 1920 1910 like that's when the general concept for a uh, an information database that could have information flow via wireless information and basically, it lets you update books at libraries on the fly. Was it was it was first put into conceptual thought by some by some very limited uh, uh, thinkers and and inventors, and and they started looking into this in various ways, including on that list was Tesla. So, you know, this this was one of the things that that in the early days, depending on what you were looking for and depending on what you were looking into. You know, it, you've you've heard of you had heard about it for a long time. So, yeah. So sorry. Well, it's um, been conceptualized. I mean, for in fiction for, for <clears throat> ages and ages. But anyway, um, the point is, <coughs> oh, excuse me, that we live in the age of the internet, where you know mm -hmm. you make a screw up like that, somebody's going to point it out, and especially yes. especially when there is all these other problems going on with your game. I mean, yeah, yeah. You at least. If, if there's one thing that I hope that game companies learn from this year, it's you have got to treat gamers with respect. These are the people that give you money in exchange for your product. These are not the people you want to be insulting and offending or brushing off like they're not important. So these, are I, the I was, these are the people yeah. you want to be treating these people like they are the most important people in the world because literally you don't have a job if they don't exist and if they're not buying your product. That's just yeah. the bottom line. And I cannot it's... believe that you have these company bigwigs that are just going out of their way. <laughs> Maybe not going out of their way, but that are just saying things like, okay, well, screw you. You don't like it. You don't buy it. As if like, as if we're not actually going to not buy it. Like, give me a break. <laughs> well, so there's there's a couple. There's, oh, there's so many segues that we can go with that. So um, segue number one uh i kind of so i kind of looked at the history of some of the games and i've been looking at kind of like because this has really felt like a really bad year but looking back i mean we saw similar horrendous releases with the um in 2016 in 2017 and even 2015 2015 was regarded as one of the worst years for gaming and um which which was surprising but it it seems that that everybody seems to forget the most recent egregious mistake, and they focus on on the on the one that's happening right now. So they they forget the one from last week, and they focus on the thing that that's going on right now. 
For example, like I said, there's so many ways to segue this. So Activision stock still falling, like still, still falling, like, like just dropping like a rock. EA stock still falling. Neither of these things have, you know, put, gone into the recovery mode that many people had predicted. Uh, so there's just like this nonstop, uh, it's just this nonstop avalanche of bad news in the gaming industry, but everybody seems to forget the ones like from the previous year. Like there's so many people who are, you know, saying, oh, Anthem is going to be the best game of the next, you know, you know, of the next five years, forgetting that we just saw the, the horrendous mistake with Mass Effect Andromeda. And yes, different studio, different heads, different, you know, different, a lot of different things. However, still, you know, still potentially can screw up that badly, right? Um, not that we're hoping for it. As we've said many times, we hope that Anthem is a success and we're hoping that they move in the right direction um, and that the game is good because it's also, it's bad for us to constantly be, you know, to have nothing but negative stories for like weeks on end. This is something that I've realized and something that I'm seeing in a lot of comment sections of other content creators. Uh, people who have been, you know, on, you know, covering all the negative stories day after day, week after week, and the, to which there's been a lot. There's EA, there's Activision, there's Blizzard, there's Bethesda. And one of the things I, I see in the comments is every once in a while I see the comment of, I'm tired of the negativity. Can we talk about something positive? And so there, there seems to be like this, just this constant, like, constantly we're getting... A lot of bad news this year and there is a desire to have some good games i don't want there to be any bombs next year when it comes to bad games i don't want anything to to be terrible i want everything to be good good enough to play and to talk about but it's not been that way for a couple of weeks now and it's really kind of it's really kind it's of frustrating i mean we're sad. trying to focus on the positive we are absolutely trying to focus on the positive and we've got some some exciting stuff to talk about with Obsidian, and of course the Game Awards should be a really fun time. And not everything is negative, and that's why I try to I try to focus and and Cybe has as well. But uh, I, I've specifically been trying to focus on the positives of Fallout seventy six as well as the negatives, because it's easy to complain about what's wrong with it. Um, but I also tr like to try and focus on what's good about it, and. Uh, you know, I discovered mutations in the game and made uh, that guide video about it, and it's been a ton of fun running around with all these mutations. And, uh, you know, I, I'm still enjoying playing the game. I play it pretty much every day. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I really can't... Uh, I, I do wish that they'd gone about things differently, and I do think it's overpriced, as I th think I mentioned last time on the podcast. But, um, but still, it's fun. Um or at least I'm having fun with it. It's not going to be everybody's mm -hmm. cup of tea, but anyway, uh, so that's the conclusion of bag gate as it's been dubbed, <laughs> which yeah. I, what, I mean, okay. I mean, bag gate, the conclusion of bag gate, but also, uh, that's what's kind of going on with, uh, red dead redemption online. So lessons to be learned there for, for how to handle these kinds of things. So, uh, Getting on to the Game Awards. Uh, now, there's rumors going around that Todd Howard is going to be there, or at least... Well, he's he's on the list of um, judges for the best student game. He and... Uh, Hideo Kojima as well. Kojima and a couple other people. So, I suspect that they'll be there to give the award. I suspect that they'll actually be there in person. Um I'm a little bit worried about, like, I'm honestly, I'd honestly be really worried if he got booed. Like, the, like, does he deserve it? Uh, again, I don't know how much of that was his call. Like, clearly there was some mistakes made. Is he learned from the mistakes would be, you know, a really important question. Um, and I hope, we, we really hope that he has, that, that he understands the importance of storytelling through NPCs and through um, through actual like you know methods that don't that don't at the at the very least methods that don't um, 
show up in stark uh, contrast of each other. Like you have in one aspect, you have in 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 Fallout seventy six, you have great storytelling in audio files. At the same time that you're trying to survive and you're talking to people in your group and trying to hear what's going on in this audio file is next to impossible. There's no flagging system for telling you which file you have not listened to or a, a way to just put pause or something like that. Like once it starts, it, it, then, you know, it, it automatically updates your quest as if you've listened to the whole thing, even if you paused it and then you're trying to go back to it. It was like, which holotape was it? And, and how does it factor into this? And then, oh yeah, none of it matters because everything is pointless. Because they're all dead. Like, every time you pick up a, a, an audio tape, they're all dead. A shocker. Um, hate to uh, be the bearer of bad news, but yeah. And so that, that um, you know, that that's diametrically opposed. I don't want them to get booed, but I fear that that might be what happens. So, um, anyways. Uh, yeah, I hope not. Yeah. Because even if you I made mean, some yes. bad calls in the, in the development, the direction of this game... Uh, I mean, his uh, that that doesn't ruin his reputation for me, um, and I and I think I think he's the kind of person that would say, oh, "Okay, we made these mistakes. Yeah, let's learn from them." Um, I don't think he's the person behind the, you know, I, I I put money on it that he's not the person behind say the the canvas bags fiasco. Like that's a completely different area of the company. Um, so. Yeah, his um, he he may have thought, and as Cybus pointed out multiple times, um, you know, it, it appears he thought that the the idea of every human player in the Fallout world that you encounter being another actual human player, so for there not to be any human NPCs, but every person you mm -hmm. encounter is another player, um, he thought would be a big selling point. Uh, he it would appear he was wrong about that. Does that completely demolish his credibility as a game creator? Not in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, yeah. everyone's entitled to make bad. I mean, it, heck, heck, again, it's like, it's like <laughs> everyone who there creates. Are there, there are perspectives in, in which you know this is a good thought, but it was just poorly implemented, and then there's very little rewards for it as well. Like there's very little rewards for you to actually set yourself up as a faction leader and dish out quests. There's there's no inbuilt system for rewarding that kind of behavior. But uh, I just want to address something that uh, Ravi has asked because th I saw this yesterday, and this was incredibly um, the the misinformation around this was uh, was pretty big. So let me just um, go over some quick data. So everybody's like, "Hey, wasn't um, wasn't the release of of Bethesda's in-game store company the first time that that they started selling?" Um, content to you uh, via the internet. Um, no, actually, and a lot of people forget when this actually first started showing up. Uh, the One of the first companies to start to sell you digital content or content that required you to log in and always maintain a connection for that was not an MMO, that was not an always online game, that was not a live service, was a single player game and required you to be online in order to play it, was in fact Bioware. And you're going to be like, what, you mean through EA? No, not through EA. They were doing this themselves when they were their own unit. This harkens all the way back to 2002, or sorry, 2003, um, they released some content for Neverwinter Nights via the Shadows of Undertide and the Hordes of the Underdark, which required you to um, purchase in an online store and then have that contact, content would, would periodically call or check to see if you were online playing and if your key codes for your game were up to date. And if it wasn't, it would brick the content and, and you'd have to reinstall it or find a, a workaround or something like that. Um, again, this was before they got bought out by EA. This was before they did any of that. So this is this is a an important thing to remember is that one of our favorite companies in the world 
happens to be one of the first companies that started to sell you content to access content that you already paid for. And this was, at the time, this didn't go over very well. Uh, I remember that because I remember when some of the, <laughs> I remember when some of the uh, staff were incredibly stressed out at the time. This was a very long time ago. And there were lots of things that were said in the, the local forums and some other places that were very, very angry. And there were a lot of people who were defending them, saying, hey, look, they're just trying to make money. How else do you expect them to make, make money and compete with the big companies? Which was hilarious at the time. And fast forward now, you look at it and you can kind of go, oh, well, this is kind of the starting point of this whole concept of selling you offline content that requires you to you know, pay it online and, and keep up with it. And, and if you can't continually call in to check, then it just bricks your content. It's like, seriously, it's, this is, this is interesting to note. And, and I mean, not hugely relevant so the, right now, but the always online fiasco and the whole, uh, you know, and the, the in-game basically, transactions mini miniature, is basically, yeah. it goes back a lot with, longer than we, uh, than we remember. Yeah. Right. And it started with Bioware of, of all places. Now they, they didn't keep up with it in the sense that a lot of people, thought or remembered in fact it's it's usually put on like some other companies as far as like well didn't this company do this and didn't this do that and and it's like it's it's well yes but actually where it started was through a company that a lot of people regarded as being you know the holy grail of companies and that's not actually the case it's like hmm. so so they're, they're i mean now it was taken to different extremes obviously and I mean, you know, getting into some mobile gaming again reminds me of, of just how like, like just perusing the stores and perusing these games. And then the first thing you get when you, when you see, or you get download one of these games, is like, Hey, buy this special access pack that includes, or that, that costs you forty nine ninety nine, And wait, we have a even better sale if you spend a hundred and thirty nine ninety nine. It's like, wait, a hundred and thirty nine. 99 what what the hell like seriously on a mobile game <laughs> on a mobile game that's free to play and and what you get is like nothing like literally some of this stuff is like is like well you get a, a 0.0047 percent chance at getting an item that you want and it's like oh that's that's ridiculous mm-hmm and you get and you're buying a hundred and forty dollars worth of stuff to get access to, you know, twenty or thirty chances at getting that. And it's like, holy crappers! <laughs> this is terrible. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so so moving on that we're we're gonna cover uh, uh, Obsidian's game. So um, this is this is something that that we're already over time basically for this. So Obsidian has a new game coming out and it's going to be debuted at the game awards so there's not a ton of um speculation we can do that's not going to be you know proven one way or the other literally in just a, a few short hours so um the the trademark that they filed a while ago was for the outer worlds um this has uh, basically been confirmed um, and an interesting thing to note is that they've teamed up with the creators of Bioshock at the same time. So people are looking at some of the artwork that's come out for this and they're looking at the kind of the, the, the project name and then they're looking at who they're working with and who they've been working with. And what you see and what you hear is this very kind of like reminiscent of Bioshock thing at the same time as being a little reminiscent of the Fallout series. And this is all really, really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. basically, I'm I'm pretty sure that this is this is the Outer Worlds. That this is what they've worked on. They've they've uh, updated trademarks on this as as late as just a few weeks ago. And they've been buying up a ton of internet IPs and stuff associated with this in as many different ways as you can. And this is, this is basically something that companies do right before they launch a product. And, um, 
and this is looking great. Like seriously, there looks like they're moving massive amounts of, of stuff on this. I don't know if we'll get it soon. Um, it may be a year before we get our hands on whatever this is, uh, or it may be slated to come up. They might pull a, a Bethesda, the good Bethesda, and say that it's coming out in March. Um, that's a possibility. Uh, could also come out uh, a little bit later. I suspect strongly that if they were going to launch it this year, that they would have done so before, you know, before the big sales period. Uh, launching it, you know, a couple of weeks this close to Christmas is, is would be out of the question. So uh, I suspect that the earliest we could possibly see this would be March. Um, the and the latest we could see it would potentially be they're they're not going to make a mistake of, of announcing this thing, you know, three or four years ahead of time. I don't think they're going to do that. Um, I think they're going to, I, I think at a maximum we'll, we'll get this in the next like 16 mm -hmm. months, basically. So, mm -hmm. so this is, this is, this is huge. Um, we've had a lot of back and forth on this as far as information coming. There's a lot of people that are speculating on this. I did a, a quick round of, of gathering up what other people have been speculating in the industry and it's about 50, 50, about 50% of the people out there are assuming that this is going to be kind of like a, a, a first person, third person action game, running around, shooting things, um, you know, that, that FPS kind of thing. Uh, the other half believe that it's going to be turn-based and it's going to be slower and it's going to be more methodical like most of the games that Obsidian has put out. Most of the games that they put out are, you know, pausable combat um, with orders and directions that you can give to individual units um, so there's a lot of people who think that it's going to be like that. So it's, it's, it's kind of all over the place. Um, then there's some concepts and this is kind of more or less where I, I lie in. I think it'll be first person, third person, but I also believe at the same time that you'll be able to pause the combat to do certain activities. So kind of this mass effect D slash, um, uh, fallout type of, of, you know, UI that you can pause or stop and issue specific orders and, and stuff within that mm -hmm. too. I think that's more likely um, because that seems to be a, a, a market that is not really, re that's not really flooded with very much. You don't have that, you know, there's a de definitely a niche market for plausible combat, like the, the XCOM kind of stuff. And then you have a, the other aspect of that where it's like, it's go, go, go 24 seven. And, there's the middle ground of that is pretty empty, but most people from either end of that can can kind of fill into that quite quickly. So, uh, hmm. yeah, so that that's that's more or less uh, where we're where we're hearing some stuff. Um, I'm I'm not I'm not 100 percent on the on the gameplay yet, but the the outer worlds this 19 20s ish kind of feel 1920 1930ish kind of kind of look and feel um the it's interesting the gun that they put up which we put up um yeah. and if you're cur if you're that, curious sure. about this stuff if you go to uh, obsidian's website obsidian.net right now the first thing you get are uh is a pop-up with advert one is a countdown to um to the game awards so mm -hmm. uh we know we're going to be seeing something uh, for the Game Awards, but then the next thing you get is what looks like an in-universe advertisement that's sort of like a 1920s, 1930s style ad for a product, um, but also sort of sci-fi-ish kind of stuff. So so it looks like what we're looking at is some kind of a retro-futuristic sci-fi game, and with a title like The Outer Worlds, um, that kind of... Uh, we don't know that that's what it's going to be called. What we do know that is that that is a trademark that Obsidian has uh, has filed for uh, some months now, back here. Now, some people comment on how this gun looks, and one of the things that this thing that this thing looks like, if you make a general comparison, there's some general familiarity with that gun from the Fallout series. And when I say that gun, I mean literally that gun. That gun, that gun that is what it's called. That yeah. gun is from the, the Fallout series. Um, usually uh, it, it showed up again in New Vegas, but it was mostly in the uh, Fallout 1 and 2 um, where it, it popped up um, 
and it's this very kind of like this big like like this big core of the of the weapon the firing mechanism the the receiver is like enormous same with the barrels usually got this double or triple effect barrel going on where it's like this layered kind of thing that makes the gun look really thick and stocky that is not just a 10 millimeter um that you see in the in the in 76 and fallout 4 but in the in fallout 3 and new vegas and then also in fallout 2 you kind of have this this aesthetic look of these weapons that were that were big and bulky like this thing looks like a book when you pull it out yeah the the, the judge dreadish kind of like uh weapon where it's like there's more than just like just the weapon going on now you look at this and you look at the 10 millimeter and you look at some of these other iconic things that were really brought in by the um by the old guard that the people who created the series to begin with those are the people that are behind this latest project at obsidian the same people the same guys with the exception of chris avalon but even he was there during the initial like during the initial like um early days of 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 the concept and design he was there i don't know how much he had to do with it but he was there um this thing has been this project has been being worked on for for many many years so this is really 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 interesting and the point of this is is that there, there's this there's this theme this connection that's being established with this with this lore and in doing this basically this call back to the to the previous um games that they've worked on and this is very very interesting i'm very very um excited to to review and check this out and to see where this is going and to see what what we're going to see come out of this um and this is going to be reminiscent of Fallout 2, Fallout New Vegas, the spiritual successor of what, you know, what maybe the uh, what Obsidian's take would have been on, which was which was a lot of the original people, a lot of the core people from the old Interplay company. A lot of those people are involved in the making of this game, so this is I feel this is our chance to see what what would have happened if the fallout series had stayed in the hands of the people who originally created it instead of ending up in in the hands of bethesda interesting. so very interesting yeah i I'm, suspect i'm stoked for I this suspect that, yeah uh megan smart uh mentioned here she thinks the uh the, the style looks like nautical sci-fi uh, she says a, a genre I'm not sure exists, but sounds awesome. I have to agree with you about that. Mm -hmm. um, now, now, and, and again, I did mention that that a lot of that they've had the help of of the studio that that brought us uh, Bioshock, and they have been working closely with them. So I suspect there's going to be like take the best things from Fallout, take the best things from Bioshock, throw them together, and not the not the like. So Bioshock was more of like the 1920s or like the nautical uh, future retroism. Uh, however, they went in a different way when they did the next, the follow-up to that game, the, the Infinite series, where it was colonial futurism. Like going all the way back to like, I mean, you know, muskets and stuff. And then they, they went into the future with that kind of a concept. And, and it's, you know, it's all over there and you know the the big dresses and and the um you know the 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 steampunkish kind of look and feel to most everything but now we're going to see i think this this little bit later on this 1920s ish kind of like the early moments of like the first like space flight concepts you know the 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 time when man first started dreaming of touching the stars and they were going to do it with giant you know uh giant rocket ships and trains that could you know fly into space and and just i mean the the concept is is quite tantalizing so this is this is really exciting i'm really 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 excited to see where this is going and how this is going to affect the the, the future of the gaming industry this blunt is man super exciting he, yeah uh blunt man says here i read an interview with a former employee of troika games where he where it was said that he was going to work for obsidian for a dream project that was almost two years ago interesting mm -hmm. yes i read that article too and there's also a reference to um one of the other one of these other legendary devs who who started talking about this 
when it was in the secret project stage, which was almost three years ago now. So this game is a lot further along. Like I had heard about this game for a while. I'd heard about the general concept of them wanting to take Fallout New Vegas and the Fallout series and to rebuild a spiritual successor for this. I heard this basically shortly after they were told by Bethesda that they're not going to allow them to develop another Fallout game, period. Um, so since then, they started working on this new concept. Is this and where the, those old uh, Fallout New Vegas 2 rumors sort of came from? That yes. We talked about yeah, like the, a year this ago? Is, yeah, this is, where, this is where the concept had kind of like come from and formulated, and there was this thought that, you know, they would eventually be able to win this, this concept in because... You know, it was the more, it was definitely the better of the games. Like, if you've never played New Vegas, like, try playing Fallout 3 for a couple of, uh, for a little bit, and then switch over to New Vegas. Um, and if you can, switch over to New Vegas with some of the new, new, the new mods that have come out. Um, like the, the new California Republic uh, game that, or mod that came out, which is amazing. Um, these things are great. Like, mm-hmm hands down these are some of the best experiences that you've ever had with with gaming period and this is like this is really cool so Hmm. so yeah this is this is i'm really excited for this obviously it's like i don't i don't want to say too much of the rumors that i've heard or too much of the the inside info that i know because like i said it's been years and a lot may have changed a lot has probably changed and I think what we're going to see is we're going to see, especially now that we we found out that that the Bioshock team has been involved considerably. Um, I think we're going to see some very interesting gameplay. Mm-hmm. So this is I, and and again, there's no point in really speculating too much on it because we're we're less than you know we're less than two days away from. Well, a little, we're we're just we're just a little over forty eight hours away from from seeing this. Mm-hmm. So, speaking yeah. of which, we are going to be co streaming, uh, like broadcasting the Game Awards with our commentary. We're also going to be doing a pre show and a post show uh, to sort of in anticipation of stuff and and to wrap things up. The pre show and post show will be on YouTube, um, but. The, the actual Game Awards itself with our commentary over top, we are going to be live streaming that on Twitch. Now, I know that's a little confusing and will cause some of you to have to switch from YouTube to Twitch and then back again. Um, unfortunately, we're kind of stuck in this position where we we just we don't want to get knocked off of the air and, and have our ability to <laughs> stream on YouTube revoked like what happened to us during E3, during the uh, Ubisoft uh, press conference and then one of the other ones. Uh, our YouTube stream actually got knocked out, and we we yeah. had a, a copyright strike applied to our channel. Uh, thankfully, that was revoked. But in the interim, like we didn't have the ability to to live stream, yeah. and since so we won't we, be controlling the we content, have to be careful. You you and plus, since then, YouTube's copyright bots have gotten uh, even more finicky. Like there, there's more. I'm having old videos constantly being flagged. With uh, with copyright, uh, not strikes, but copyright um, claims, claims and stuff. And you where to, you where there weren't any before, uh, like and it's 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 so annoying because some of these claims are ridiculous. Did you know that you can record white noise, just like the sound of your like just set up a, a, a recording device in your in your in your room or in a quiet place and just record static white noise, upload that, and you'll get like six or seven companies claiming that it's theirs. It's like my goodness, the the insanity that is the current system is quite scary. Frankly, is quite um, it's got a little overboard. Scary. But I mean, bottom line, yeah. like stuff yeah. like that on on pre recorded videos is 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 easier to deal with, and and then a live stream like this where we can one hundred percent control, you know what what goes into the stream, uh, it's fine. But since we don't know what, and we do know there's going to be music there, and that's the big problem. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. so if while we're live, the the bots kick in and and say, "Oh, you're playing this copyrighted content," uh, they just kick the, kick our live stream off, and we could lose our our ability to do live streams for like three months, uh, unless they fix it like after the Ubisoft thing 
I think they fixed it pretty quick because I imagine we're not the only channel that got. Oh no, there were so many people who got. Uh, but anyway, got just down. to make sure that that we don't have any problems, we're going to be streaming the actual game awards with commentary on Twitch. But I will post a a, a full schedule of what's happening in our Discord channel. Um, now, uh, on that note, if you so if you want updates on that, or if you just want to keep the conversation from this uh, live broadcast going after we're done here today, uh, please join our Discord uh, server. You can find the link in the description below. Uh, it's a place where you can talk to us and other Triple S fans about all the things we love to talk about and stay up to date about everything we're doing here at the Triple S League. Click the link below to join and be sure to say hi to us in the welcome channel. And like I said, I, as soon as I know all the details and we've hammered out times and things like that, uh, I'll, I'll post a, a full schedule of what we're doing on uh, on Thursday for the Game Awards. Uh, in some places of the world, it's actually Friday morning that the Game Awards are happening. So, um, uh, Rave says just do it all on Twitch. Well, maybe we'll, we'll we'll think about that. We're still we're still hammering out some details. All right. Now to, um, now we've gone, yeah, we, we're not going to take too much time with this, but we're going to do a few predictions for, uh, for Game Awards, and feel free to throw yours in the chat as well as we, as we go through these. We're not going to do every category here, but we're just going to look at the major ones and talk about them a little bit. Game of the Year, recognizing a game that delivers the absolute best experience across all tech, all creative and technical fields, uh, so the nominees, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Celeste, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, and Monster Hunter World, and Red Dead Redemption 2. I was absolutely, I was very happy and surprised, but happy to see Celeste in this list. You, you don't often see a platformer being nominated for Game of the Year. Yeah. But Celeste was an absolutely fantastic game. It's, it's a very atmospheric uh, indie game, and uh, that one got my vote. Now, I, I don't know what its chances are of, of actually winning Game of the Year. Um, um, not likely. <laughs> so, <laughs> Probably so, not. Okay, so Ubisoft, Ubisoft's um, Assassin's Creed, it didn't do that well, and the community is not um, behind it as much as certain parties would like you to think. Um, so that is definitely not going to win. Um, God of War has a chance of winning, but it was it was quite a while ago now, so there's not. So, unfortunately, a lot of these votes do tend to um, have the unfortunate effect of having, like, you know, uh, games that release earlier in the year tend to not get in as many votes as games that release tend later in the year. tend to forget about it, yeah. Yeah, so, so, uh, so that might suffer from that. Now, Spider-Man, it did really well, but it's only on the PlayStation. So, you don't have as many people voting for that as you have voting for a product that is on all three or on two consoles versus three or more. Uh, so this is where Monster Hunter World takes the takes the advantage in the majority of cases. And Monster Hunter World is a big series, uh, did very well this year, very well received, was one of the few MMO kind of games that didn't suffer from a ton of massive problems uh, at the at launch so one of the few experiences where where they didn't have a lot of those issues however they did have a segmented launch they had the consoles first and then almost i mean just recently they launched it on to pc now the community is very active for both of these games and i'm happy to say that the modding is also quite active on the pc version which is something that actually got me really interested in potentially playing this game because it's um uh, it seems that the modding is quite accessible, and it seems that it's not um, it's not being turned off religiously by by Capcom. So this game could possibly take it. The Red Dead Redemption is probably going to win it, and probably deserves to win it, considering how polished and how good the game is, and and how much everybody loves it. Um, however, the the problem with that again is that it's not on PC yet. So. Uh, the the PC crowd is going to vote for out of all of these is either going to vote for God of War or Monster Hunter World. Um, if you split the vote for the Sony crowd between Spider Man and Red Dead, that could actually end up pushing Monster Hunter World to take take the the game of the year. 
Um, but it's really, I think, down between Monster Hunter and Red Dead Redemption. Um, th- those are the two options there. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think, I, again, uh, God of War probably deserves it. It was a very well done game, but unfortunately it released really, really early in the year. And again, is remembered um, not not as, as freshly as some of these other games. It's a definitely a good game. Definitely deserves to be on this list. List. I I think if I were to rank this, um, mine would be Red Dead followed by God of War followed by Monster Hunter World, and all three of those would be really close to each other. Uh, Spider Man being a close fourth, and then um, probably Celeste in there because honestly, Assassin's Creed with the way that they pushed the the in game monetization was was quite despicable so i i think that i i think that it shouldn't even be on the list i i don't even know why it is on the list it, there were better games this year <laughs> so um yeah so i think that's that's really where it it falls to don't be shocked if monster hunter world wins this because again you've split the vote between the sony crowd um between their i mean they've got you know they've got the the marvel spider-man and they also have Assassin's Creed, and they also have um, God of War. All of these are heavily favored on the on the PlayStation, and that splits that vote. So the, I think what boils down here is if if it's purely a numbers thing, if this was if this was an election and everybody had had only one vote, um, I think I think Monster Hunter would take it and it would be the surprise winner. Uh, but I, I suspect that because of the way that you can vote repeatedly and, and it's easy to kind of spam some votes, uh, I think Red Dead will take it. Um, probably, but don't be surprised if Monster Hunter pulls out a surprise win. Uh, if if Spider-Man wins, then I think the younger generation um, that mostly played that obviously spammed the ever-living crap out of the voting system if um if assassin's creed wins then call for um voter manipulation obviously because you know clearly that if god of war wins then um i don't know i don't know what that means for i don't know what that means for that but uh, yeah, so that, that, that's basically how I'm looking at this. I'm being a little facetious with some of that. I'm I'm kind of joking, but ultimately, I think I think I think like what deserves to win is definitely Red Dead because they they've definitely made a extremely polished game. Now the multiplayer version the multiplayer version is not out. It needs to be that really needs to be categorized as a separate game, um, and it's not out yet. It's not finalized yet. It seems that they're leaning heavily towards some pay to win setups and if they follow suit with that then give them hell but as far as red dead redemption goes that's the game to win um you don't have deep storytelling in monster hunter world you have some storyline that's that's good from from what i hear um and the gameplay is pretty decent little repetitive but you know that's the type of game that it is and you don't play it and if you're not into that kind of you know kill uh, 40 monster kill 40 of the the highest monsters that you can find to craft you know something not really really cool so that you can kill more higher ranked monsters faster it's like that that's what that game is it's a grind it's just a fancy way of grinding stuff but i mean that's all all these all these games are more or less is just about grinding repetitive action to you know get some some kind of a f- fulfillment out of it so hmm. um but yeah don't be shocked if monster hunter world wins it what that means is that Red Dead Redemption probably should have released on all three platforms and they might have taken the win. Um, This is definitely something that future companies will need to start paying attention to if Monster Hunter World wins. And in that regard, I honestly hope they win so that more companies will launch on the PC sooner. But again, because Monster Hunter World did have that divided release date and section of the PC came later than the consoles, um, we may or may not see that as an effect. So mm-hmm. it's really interesting. It was r- really interesting to watch. But yes, anyways, moving on. All right, best ongoing game. Uh, Destiny 2 Forsaken is one of the nominees. Fortnite, No Man's Sky, 
Overwatch and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Now, I had to laugh at this. Uh, was No Man's Sky intentionally in this category? Like, was that ever ever intentionally meant to yeah. be an ongoing game? Or <laughs> No, it, you know, it was always meant to be an ongoing game. And to be fair, I did pop into this game and play it recently. I put about um, 10 hours into this in the last few days. Why, you may ask? Well... Part of the reason would part of the main reason was I wanted to see what a game that had been through so much hate and so much failure, how that resulted and how that managed to pull itself out of that and become a game that is by by the number of people playing it, by the recent Steam reviews on it, is overwhelmingly positive. How did it go from being such a failure to being such a positively received? Now, why did I do that? Well, there's this little game called Fallout 76 that came out recently and needed to do some data and soul searching on that. So, um, I have to say that the game is much better uh, overall. It's much, 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 much better. Um, however, there's still a lot of issues with it in in a lot of ways that, like, the game is so much better now. And if it had launched as this, it would be a very respectable game. But it didn't launch as that, and there's still a lot of things that are missing from it. There's still um, there's still a lot of difficulty in finding a reason to continue to play, other than the continuing the continual grind that presents itself. Um, the storyline did not hook me. The factions I kept wanting to you know take some missions from some factions and do some stuff, but it was just it, it, there was such a barrier to that right at the get go. Um, that it seemed to be not that helpful. Now the the infinite mode or the grind like the, where you can craft and and build things and and do whatever you want. And this like the kind of creative mode that there that seems to be the more popular of the modes. Um, and it right away just like gives you the ability to just like basically be a Minecraft simulator. Um, so after having gone through all that, basically I can say that. It's good. I don't think it's good enough to win this. I think Fortnite will take this as easily as a good win. Destiny, despite the fact that the Forsaken content has been received well, still has not regained the number of subs that they lost through their um, quite crappy and quite aggressive and terrible monetization, let's say. Um, yeah. It, it's it's launch and then the subsequent uh, problems that they faced again and again and again and all the issues that came from that uh, this this does not deserve to be on this list period I would have replaced this with with Warframe easily I would have replaced it war, with Warframe I think Warframe was on it last year I think they won last year I, I'm gonna have to double check that but um, Destiny does not belong on this list it they've made a lot of improvements but that's a very short term thing that's only happened very recently and not enough to mm -hmm. carry it overwatch has been dying recently uh, like the numbers and players have have constantly been dropping quite significantly over the last couple of months um i don't suspect it'll win because i don't suspect that it has the the community passion behind it that it needs to win that i think that won last year actually um so yeah, I'm not. Uh, I don't think Overwatch will take it. Tom Clancy might. Rainbow Six Siege apparently has gotten really good, and apparently the community is quite passionate about it. So between that though and Fortnite, I think Fortnite will probably take it. So I that's think, my. That's my. I th yeah, I think I think Fortnite's going to take that category. Best Game Direction Next awarded to a game studio for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. We've got A Way Out, Detroit Become Human. God of War, Marvel's Spider-Man, and Red Dead Redemption 2. So, on this list, I'm actually pulling for Red Dead Redemption 2 because as an overall direction of open world and how you make a game and how you present a game, I think this definitely takes the cake. It, I want to see more games like Red Dead Redemption 2 come out. I want to see more games come out that has that level of polish, and that much of an open world, and that much of a narrative um, direction that they move in. The game can really be played like a, a story mode kind of thing. You don't have to involve yourself with a ton of the open world repetitiveness. You can just focus on the, the story and focus on the quest. 
So I will say that that probably deserves to win, but I do want to say that the the direction, if you're looking at previous games to current game, I say the most growth here is probably God of War from the previous games to this game. Just the, the amount of change that they brought into that at the same time as making that such a meaningful game and also staying with their audience. Like, you've got to remember that that when the original God of War games came out, they were played by young, angsty teens. And fast forward to this one coming out, a lot of those young, angsty male teens are now young dads with sons in around the five-year range. And they were able to connect with this game on a really deep level. And it was a story that a lot of them... Now, talk about growing with your audience. That was that was the other thing, that, that, that God of War really just took off. If you played God of War when you were young, uh, when it first came out, and then you played it again now, the, the connections to your life and where you are and where the story is at, and, and this the, so much of this boils down to that. And this is why, really, God of War really does require more of more praise than what it's gotten. And, I don't know, they might get it to, on the Game Awards. They might not. We'll yeah. see. Well, I mean, they're but, in Best Narrative as well. And that, that, mm-hmm. might, that might be yeah. one where they take it. Best so, n- really, really happy with that. Now, Detroit Become Human, um, it was a little short. and But it, it, it definitely fits in this because it's like art direction for a game. Um, it really does. But again, the limited uh, release and accessibility of it and then... The fact that it was a little bit shorter than what some people were wanting. I don't know if it'll take the cake, but it does definitely deserve to be on the list, and it deserves some high praise for mm-hmm. for what it was. It's just whether or not that will stack, we're not I'm not certain of yet. And then a way out definitely belongs to definitely deserves to be here. Um this is one of these games that was just very well done and, and for games going in a new direction. The game was great. It didn't receive as much praise as it w- as it should have, um, but yeah, it's this is this is definitely this is definitely a good game. I think uh, I don't think it'll win because I don't think it was as big as it needs to be to compete with God of War or Red Dead. I really hope Spider Man doesn't win in this. Not because it doesn't deserve it. Not because it's it's not a great game. But it's it is a great game, but it's just it's also like it's a little bit too um, it's a little bit too Hollywoodish, and I want Hollywood to stay the hell out of my games as much as possible. I don't mind some of the narrative and story refinements that they can bring, but I do not want them to. I really don't want Hollywood to control my, my gaming uh, games in general. It's like I don't want them to become like the next Hollywood series. Like, like I don't, I'm very thankful for the way that, that they handled, uh, this game and the way that it came out and, and it, it has come out quite well and it, it's been received really positively big. I'm still, you know, a lot of my childhood still revolves around the old Spider-Man cartoons and, and it had a real big impact on me when, when I was young. And I really like the series as a whole. And with uh, Stan Lee's passing this year, I I think maybe it does deserve a good win. Um, but at the same time, it's like it's it, it was just a little too Hollywood-ish, plus the fact that it was isolated on, on just the one console. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's probably... I, I, so, so, many, so many of these are console exclusives yeah. or or just yeah. PS4 so, exclusives. And, so that makes it a little still, bit really, different. I do respect it. I do respect what Insomniac oh, did with this game. I, I, I have think, heard that it is a fantastic game. One of the... Yes. A lot of people streamers i've heard uh, talking about it have said you know it's one of the best games i've ever played yeah great direction so really happy with it really happy overall the direction is really really solid i'm really really pleased to see the um the continuation of this so uh but overall it's it's i don't want it to win this i think what we, we what we as a community want more studios we, what we want to encourage them more studios to do is to go out and make good games like red dead that's what we want we want to see that polish we want to see that um that kind of concept or we want to see people thinking of new ways to bring gamers together that happened in a way out i think that is 
that was brilliant. Um, they needed to have an online component so that you could do so that you could do that online. Um, I, I I know that there was some talk about that, but again, because it wasn't easily accessible, I I don't know 100% whether that that came to fruition or not. So okay. I'm not um, I'm not 100% on that. So. All right, uh, uh, best narrative for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game. We've got Detroit Become Human, God of War, Life is Strange 2, Episode 1, Marvel Spider-Man, and Red Dead Redemption 2. So, what's your what's your pick for this one? I'll let you talk. You know, <laughs> this one's really hard for me because, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, all five of these are games I have not played. Now, I yeah. have... Uh, I, I mean, I've heard that uh, the story in Detroit Become Human is fantastic. I've heard that the story in, in, in God of War is fantastic. Uh, I don't really know much about Life is Strange 2. Um, and uh, Red Dead, I mean, uh, again, I've been, avo I've been avoiding spoilers on it, so I, I, I can't, mm -hmm. even though that's a game that really interested me, I didn't. This one's, I, in fact, I don't even think I voted on this one, but if I were to... If I were to make a semi-educated guess, I think my pick would be Detroit Become Human. Okay. My vote would be uh, God of War uh, for, for narrative. Yeah. I think uh, that would be my second pick, yeah. I think that is. Uh, Red Dead is great for story. Um, so is Spider-Man. All three of these are... All three of the other ones are, are, are really decent um, in that order. Uh, with Red Dead, I really like the way that your character changes as you as you play the game so if you play the game and you're a piece of shit then you you become that and people react to you on that if you play the handsome devilish good-hearted rogue then then you know the game formulates to that and that is without giving away any story um i, I think that's amazing well your physical so, appearance changes too uh depending yes on what yeah you do as yeah. well right so 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 it's it's close it's not Something I mean, we have seen that in other games before, but ultimately, I think I, I voted for God of War on this one because the narrative of God of War followed me a bit closer. Um, I said this before, I think, in 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 Discord that that the the game was so good that I have difficult that I have that I don't think I could finish it myself. Uh, again, I've I've only watched people play it, and I couldn't spend as much time watching it as, because it got to me. In a in a deep way, and so I think that's one of the things that that um, that really stood out to me. So that that got my vote for that, just because I did watch quite a few people play it on the stream, and I gotta say that 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 really comes through in that storytelling department, and which is why I it gets my vote for that. So even though all of these games are you know the, ex with the exception of Life is Strange um, are unfortunately like they're all on consoles, so. Mm -hmm. Which is stupid, <laughs> really, really stupid. Uh, um, best yeah. art direction next. Uh, this might be the last one we get to here today, but uh, for outstanding creative and/or technical achievement in artistic design and animation, we've got Assassin's Creed Odyssey, God of War, Octopath Traveler, Red Dead Redemption Two, and Return of the Obra Din. I think on this one, I I will go with Red Dead on this one because of the way that they were able to make a Western world be that um, that enthralling, which was something that I said early on. I don't know if they were going to be able to manage to pull off uh, early on. I kept saying he's it like, it's like I know this game will be popular in the West. And a little bit in in Asia, but I don't know how much. But it turns out that it's massively popular pretty much everywhere. So they managed to take that Western motif and really make it something that players liked and they like to spend their time in. So I, I've got to say that that as an that that huge huge because it was harder to do. I think it's easier to make something that's more foreign to you become a little bit more connected, but to take something that's that's simplistic and to make it um to make it resonate is a little bit more difficult it, it's easy to take a, a an ancient period and make the ancient wonders look amazing it's harder to do that with something that's a little bit closer to you in the in the 
time frame respective. Um, I don't know if that's coming out very clearly, but mm-hmm. yeah, overall, I think I think I think that one gets it. I think there were, I mean, some of the other games were definitely deserved to be on the list, and I like to see um, the two D style of, of the one game there and. Uh, I think that that's a good thing to encourage and it's a good thing to, to see and it's a good thing to have that continue to uh, to kind of grow in that perspective. But as far as that goes, I think I think throw that to 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 uh, Red Dead again. Yeah, I, I, I think Red Dead has a has a pretty good chance in this category. I think God of War has a decent chance as well. I think all of these basically deserve to be here, but uh mm-hmm. All right. Um, All right. Uh, one last thing I do want to do want to mention again is the the best performance. Uh, so the best performance is uh, Detroit Become Human for one, the main one of the main male characters on that. Christopher Judd for for Kratos. Um, Cassandra for uh, Assassin's Creed, um, and then Morgan for uh, or sorry the the Roger Clark as Morgan uh, for Red Dead Redemption, and then also. Um, uh, Peter Parker for Spider-Man. Out of all of these, for the actors, for the representation that they did, um, I've got to hand this to Christopher Judd, and I really encourage you, if you haven't voted for this, go over, give him a vote for this. Um, not that the other characters that played these other roles didn't deserve it, uh, but one of the things, for example, Peter Parker, played by a guy in his like, 40s, I think. So, <laughs> that's it's kind of like, oh, um, okay, uh, He's a teen, right? Okay, maybe. I guess I don't know. As Whatever. an animated character, that you can get away with that. As, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As somebody who's wearing a mask on, pretty much all the time, it's it's harder to uh, to to do that. Whereas I really gotta say, I really gotta hand this to Christopher Judd. He really, 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 really deserves it, and I really hope he wins because his his portrayal was fantastic, and he definitely deserves it. He is probably one of the most underrated actors you've ever seen. Even in the Stargate series, which you know brought him up to to that acting position, he really wasn't well known before that. Um, he is one of the core pieces of the good acting in that. There's a couple of like really dramatic episodes where he shines more than um, more than most actors do in in their entire career, and he can he's pulled that off time and time and time again. And he's taken some of these things where it's like it's a little like cringy or a little bit silly or whatever, and as far as like sci-fi goes, and he still manages to just make it exceptional. And I gotta give it, I gotta give it to him, and I really hope he wins. So, all right, and that's where we have to call it for today. But thank you everybody for supporting this show, for the great conversation in the chat. Uh, thank you especially to our Patreon supporters, Old Man Manson, Jeronon, and our two anonymous supporters. And uh, before you go and close that browser. Don't forget to slam that like button. And if you're listening after the fact on SoundCloud, we thank you for your follows and likes on iTunes. Thank you for subscribing and reviewing the show. And feel free to join us on Friday at noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time for the live show where you can interact with us and other listeners and be a part of the discussion. And don't forget this coming Thursday, we are doing live Game Awards coverage. So be sure to check us out for that. Subscribe to the Triple S League YouTube channel for that. The Augmented Reality Podcast is a presentation of the Triple S League. Check out our YouTube channel for game guides, reviews, comedy, news updates, and tons more quality gaming content. My name is Ashenity, and on behalf of Subsidian, thank you so much for listening. Uh, feel free to keep the conversation going in the Discord server, and we will talk to you on Thursday for the Game Awards. Take care, everybody.